Hello, my name is Cameron McQuarrie. I'm a scientist at Arcadia Science in Berkeley, California. And today I'll be talking about these amoeboid algae, which form really cool extensions. So these cells are all members of a group called chlorarachniophytes. And there are at least four different species in this group that carry out both amoeboid type cell motility and photosynthesis. So a few examples of this type of motility can be seen with Gymnochlora, Amorphochlora amoeboformis, and this unnamed Lotharella species. And what you'll notice is that all of these cells are depending on these long, intricate extensions to carry out their type of motility. However, motility is not the only benefit of these extensions. As you can see on the right, Bigelowiella uses these extensions for predation. So in the first movie on top, you'll see this algal cell, which has already reached its arm out, um, to a group of plastids from a lysed diatom on the plate. Um, and you can see that it's at the end, it's got these membranous ruffles which are helping to degrade the plastids um, and likely taking up those nutrients through these extensions. Another example can, can be seen below um, with this cell, which is reaching out its arm aimlessly, um, and then a bacteria gets stuck on the slide and it will kink its arm, change directions, and engulf that bacteria. Strangely, we've also seen these extensions reaching out to neighboring cells of the same species. Here you can see one, a larger cell reaching out and actually sucking up the cytoplasm from a smaller cell on the same slide. So these cells will often cluster together, and when they do that, they often will form even larger extensions. So on the left movie, you can see um, this extension in the center is actually four microns wide um, with several branches coming off. And when we look at it under a live microscope, we can see very rapid transport of the cytoplasm through these extensions. So we became very interested about what is actually happening and decided to, to throw some dyes on these cells and see what's being trafficked through. Um, so in the middle movie, you can see Amorphochlora amoeboformis. Um, and this was stained with Mitotracker, um, which is shown in green, and the magenta is the autofluorescence from the chloroplast. Um, and you can see that the chloroplast is present in this long extension. However, as soon as we hit it with the light, the chloroplast will retract back into the body. Um, however, the mitochondria continue to be trafficked throughout the extension. Um, similarly, when looking at Bigelow yellow, um, these cells were stained with Mitotracker again, uh, DAPI for DNA, and the magenta is the autofluorescence from the chloroplast. Um, and you can see both mitochondria and DNA being trafficked through these extensions in both species. The cytoplasmic trafficking that we observed in these extensions was reminiscent of cytoplasmic streaming in many plant species. We had read that cytoplasmic streaming may aid in photo photosynthesis, so to determine if there's any correlation between photosynthesis and these extensions in our species, we um, did a simple assay where we grew up the cells under three different conditions, either in complete darkness, in 12-12 light dark uh, cyclic, or in 24 hours of light. Um, so after about three days under these conditions, we took the cells and imaged them under the scope and measured how many of these cells actually had extensions. And interestingly, whenever they were in complete darkness, there were zero extensions coming out of these cells. Um, however, under the standard 12-12 light dark cycle, um, roughly half of the cells did have extensions coming out. And this became even more prominent with about 75% of cells having extensions whenever they were in 24 hours of light. These structures are reminiscent of structures in other cells that are dependent on the cytoskeleton. So to test that that's the case in these cells, we treated the cells with a panel of different actin cytoskeleton inhibitors. Um, interestingly, when we treat it with latrunculin B or cytoclasin D, two actin polymerization inhibitors, we saw no change in the percent of cells that had extensions. However, if you look at the representative images on the left, you can see that these extensions became a lot stubbier uh, compared to the DMSO control. We didn't really see any change in the percent of cells with extensions until we treat it with actin nucleation inhibitors. 
like Smith H2, which, which targets Formans, or CK666, which targets the ARP23 complex. Um, we're still trying to fully understand why the nucleator inhibitors um, have such a drastic effect, while the actin polymerization inhibitors um, seem to be much more minor, uh, but that's for further study. So thanks for tuning in and listening to the talk today. Um, I'd like to thank you for listening and uh, my advisor, um, Prachi Avashti, um, and please reach out if you have any feedback or questions we'd love to discuss. Um, we've got our pub on this website with that link and our full project page is also available. Thank you.